Welcome to the Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television where you, the MSME, get sent a stage. This is ET Now's special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and center on every industry and area that matters to you. Tonight, we're talking about the role that teaching entrepreneurship and encouraging youngsters to think like entrepreneurs can really have as far as the workforce is concerned. First up, let me introduce uh, who's on our panel tonight. We have Hussein Dohadwala. He is an IB and CIA experience educator. Next up, Rakhi Vaswani. She is the founder of Palette Culinary Studio. And last, we have Siddharth Shahani, is executive director of the Indian School of Design and Innovation. Thank you all very much for being here tonight. Uh, Hussein, Rakhi, Siddharth, thank you, thank for, you for your time. It's Amesha. a very fascinating topic. We talk about education a lot here on the Leaders of Tomorrow because it's one of the building blocks for any entrepreneur, no matter what industry you're in. And uh, today, we thought we'd take a slightly different route, not just talk about education and skilling, which we talk about a lot for corporate India, but what's being done possibly at the primary school level. And I can't think of anyone better than the three of you here tonight. So let's start. And I want to open this up to the three of you uh, about the big picture when it comes to thinking like entrepreneurs, training to think like entrepreneurs at a primary school level in India. Are we seeing enough of that? How do we incorporate it better? So I think what's really important and where you hit the nail on the head is it's thinking like an entrepreneur. It's not that we want to make all these kids an entrepreneur, but getting that mindset right. So I think private schools and a lot of international schools have started the groundwork because the kind of curriculum and the assessment which is there in international schools allow students to develop those skill sets which are so representative of an entrepreneur. But obviously a lot of work needs to be done as far as our public schools are concerned, as far as even the state board schools are concerned, in terms of developing a mindset developing that atmosphere within school which encourages out-of-the-box thinking. Sure. So I actually remember when I was sitting with a school architect when he was talking about out-of-the-box thinking, he said, we stay in a box, a classroom is a box. How do we get kids to think outside think out that of the box? box? That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. And you were talking about public schools, I will come back to that, right. but uh, let me get opening comments from the two of you as well. So for me, I feel that it's very important that you know the age where they're actually selecting their subjects, which is your eighth standard, is the, the crucial years they're looking at counselors and all, to you know uh, put it at that level. I think it'd be very very good, so that you know it kind of helps them guide their career, their future. Like my son, who's right now studying in Edinburgh, and he's doing his undergrad degree. So he's doing a business program, but they have an entrepreneurship program which he's really vying for to do. Had it been offered earlier, I think it would have made so much of a difference, you know. Sure. But again, like I said, our education system in India is a lot of theoretical. Sure. So to incorporate this in a more like out of the box, as he said, yeah. so the studies have to be done out of the box. It should be more case studies, more practical, more, you know, hands-on approach would be a much better approach, I feel. Okay. You know, and at ISMI, we have this wonderful opportunity to take all the work that they're doing and actually provide encouragement and mentorship to these students who are coming through, right? Because as they grow older, what they want is a bit of support, they want a bit of validation, and more importantly, connection into networks so they can take their ideas and go forward. You know, one thing about entrepreneurship that's extremely important is what is the challenge that you're trying to solve and what is the impact of that challenge and helping the students right from primary level or through right up to higher education, actually giving them that confidence to go out and bend reality. You know, that is something that will really make a sea of change for us. So it comes back to mindsets, it comes back to opportunities, but the idea is giving them that confidence that, you know, there are opportunities in entrepreneurship, because India has been an entrepreneurial co country, right? It's just that now it's got a framework. We are, of course, going to have uh, the youngest population ever by size going forward, and it is necessary that we create enough entrepreneurship opportunities and mindsets and entrepreneurs because the formal work system may not necessarily be able to absorb them. Uh, I want to come back to what you're seeing in terms of um, the public school system. For anything to have a real effect in India, it has to be mass, right. but that comes at a cost. Would the three of you possibly agree? And how do you then ensure that high quality education is being provided to also the public schools? So I think what the Maharashtra State Board has done is so I'm part of a, the committee which is basically looking at setting up an international board within the Maharashtra State Board. 
and uh, one of the things that they're looking is how do we develop children to be innovators to be change makers mm -hmm. and this will be only for Marathi medium schools because obviously that's the kind of impact you know that's the kind of scale that we're talking about so I think you know they've already taken the baby steps towards you know that larger goal of at least you know getting the curriculum and the assessment which will help children in developing you know those kind of skill sets thinking outside the box and I think it's really important. Another thing which we often forget is, we always talk of English education, but I think the maximum impact will be when we, these courses are taken in the mother tongue. Because mother tongue is when these kids think naturally. So if English is a foreign language for a lot of them still. So I think that's where a project like this would really have a lot of impact in terms of public schools. Because they're seeing that, you know, how international schools are impacting, you know, uh, in terms of this kind of skills that students are developing. So they're looking at taking that same model, but obviously contextualizing it, keeping the region as well as the language in mind. Okay. So what I'm basically trying to understand, and maybe the three of you can advise the MSMEs who are watching our show. For the MSMEs who are saying, yes, this is a great business opportunity that I could look at to be able to teach entrepreneurship as a course, but there is going to be a cost involved because you're coming up with this curriculum, you're coming up with that infrastructure, you're coming up with that environment. How can it be made more broad-based if it is to become a sustainable business idea? You know, I think the MSMEs and the people who are interested in, you know, fueling the entrepreneurial engine of India need to look at it a lot more holistically, right? And there are four or five points that, you know, I'd like to touch upon. I think the first is that you are in a way training future talent that eventually will support you or support someone within your ecosystem. I think that's a great return on investment. All of us are struggling with talent. The other opportunity is to be part of someone else's growth story. So once you have these courses, the next stage is actually putting in incubators and accelerators to support them going forward, right? So here's where the network comes in, here's, when your, here's where your venture capital comes in, so it builds that entire ecosystem. And thirdly, I think there is a social cost that all of us have to bear, right? Um, it is a socio-economic problem that we all have to work together. The government has shown great direction through, you know, its Niti Aayog and uh, the Atal Innovation Mission, setting up tinkering labs in, in the poorest of areas, pairing private schools with public schools for mentorship. They're really creating and seeding the, the ecosystem. But I think we can't look at it as just a pure PNL based on how many courses delivered and, and the revenue brought back. You have to broad base your uh, model. But it's definitely a model. We've been doing it. We've been doing it successfully now for four years. And we see the more you diversify into different elements, other than pure delivery, the returns are far, far superior. What do you mean by uh, different elements? So there are a couple of elements. The first element, of course, is that we are building ecosystems which have incubators and accelerators in them. Uh, we're very lucky that the students who come to us are mu much older, so they already have an idea. They've already gone through some of these great schools and, and programs, so they are ready to go out there. But they need support. They need a network. They need initial capital. Um, they also need ecosystems to actually get tell so within school you have your teacher you have your principals you're, you're cocooned in a way right entrepreneurship is a big bad world so if we can handhold them for a couple of more years then that really creates a big business opportunity for for these students so we talked about incubators accelerators then also the other thing is a huge part of entrepreneurship now globally and in India is also working with corporations right because a lot of these are business to business entrepreneurs so getting them the right client and the customer customer also helps them immensely. At the same time, we can encourage them to become so social entrepreneurs, and that's where you see your grassroots impact happening. All right, Raki, um, a very interesting survey uh, came out a few years ago when the IT uh, industry body, NASCOM, said only 20 to 25 percent of all students coming out of colleges today have the necessary skill sets for their jobs. So one part, of course, is skilling them, and the other part is what these two gentlemen are doing in terms of providing the entrepreneurship skills. What has been your experience of students who are coming in, uh, and you know the kind of skill sets that they perhaps require, what would you hope perhaps that they had known before they come in or what perhaps from your own experience you wish you had had the training for? What even I feel in our industry, even in our culinary, so uh, half the people don't know the difference between an uh, entrepreneurship program and businessmen, right? So now that is one thing which is going to get clarified when we introduce so many such courses. Now even in our culinary world, uh, many of them only have the option of doing a hotel management program, which is a 360 degree view, where they have to learn front, back, everything. Now many of the children over there who are 18, 19, 20, or at any age group, like me, I went backwards. I started training later, right? They want to do only a culinary program or only a bakery program, which is not there in India. 
and that's where it you know got me to thinking that if I could put everything on hold and go there why not bring those courses here so I had to bring in the certifications here make it more as a bridge the gap between the east and the west now if we have those formal trainings then you literally know which direction you're going in so um, like like our team my staff um, today wherever I am whatever I am doing it's always a team effort it's not me alone yeah. so if these kids like I said are already trained and they know a direction it's so good to have these interactive sessions and know your way forward what's going wrong what's correct what is a different approach strategy needs to be changed so there's so much that you can do I have an interesting question for you do you feel that there was an opportunity cost involved with you saying I had to go backwards and learn a lot of things about entrepreneurship uh, do you think there was a cost involved with that whether financial or otherwise yes of course it was I mean you we all know that you know studying abroad is not uh, reasonable it is expensive and uh, it is and again a lot of obstacles I might have made many mistakes as well which I think if I had been trained even now if I'm given the opportunity I would love to do that and even put my team across the same program sure. So even institutions like them, if you'll have courses for people like us now, I know we can pick it and it'd be good. But if I had been given that opportunity earlier, I'm sure I would have a lot a of things at least I have guess made easier. a bigger impact sure. or you know made a change and I would have had it more smoothly, I guess. All right, let's take a very quick break on that note, uh, but we'll continue talking about the role that early education and entrepreneurship can have on the people coming out into our workplaces. That's on the other side. Just stay tuned. here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight we're talking about the role that teaching entrepreneurship at the early education level can have on our future entrepreneurs. Standard 8 and 9 right. is uh, typically the age at which I understand you know entrepreneurship is being taught in a lot of institutions including yours. Uh, is there a specific reason why you choose this age group? Do you think it should be possibly younger and if yes, See, how should maybe the curriculum See, the be changed why to is because be able to address one that? Is, uh, that's the age when they start deciding their subjects. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot more clarity. There is a certain sense of maturity also and uh, it becomes that much more easier. So for instance, you know, kids who do business economics in grade 9 and 10 with us, they're already selecting subjects which are to bent, you know, towards that line of thinking. So it does help and they have the most important is they have the sense of maturity at that age group. And also you need to get the right kind of teachers. And I think teachers at that section, I think the advantage has been with international schools, you get a lot of professionals now coming in who want to get back into teaching. Earlier teaching was, you know, least preferred choice. But now teaching has become a very sought after. Yeah, okay. It's become a sought after choice. So I have a lot of individuals who've done, you know, their higher education outside India who have that mindset. So when they come back, when they're teaching it indirectly through their teaching, also they're developing and inculcating that mindset. Okay. Interesting point you've made, and I want to ask the three of you this: training the trainer. We're seeing a lot of that happening in some industries, but it's not happening perhaps across all industries. If entrepreneurship is to be developed as part of a holistic system, how do you ensure that you're training the teachers who are then training the students? So the first thing that we did is we took uh, a number of our faculty members and sent them to Babson, which is in Boston. Um, that's the number one entrepreneurship school and yes. ranks highly, and they have actually made a complete methodology of how do you train the trainer, right? Then what we did is we took that and then we worked with schools and brought in all their teachers and then trained them. So you already see this leapfrogging triple down effect. Uh, the next thing that we did is now these teachers are going back into their classrooms and influencing their students. These students are then further influenced to go and work with peers to make them more entrepreneurial in nature. So there is a lot of it happening because the biggest input for any education system is the faculty, right? And we're spending a lot of mind share, I would say, on making sure that we get the right faculty or the faculty of the ability to be trained. I want to break this down to ask the three of you to talk about what perhaps makes a successful entrepreneurship program when you are talking to students. Uh, you know, no matter what the age of the student is, maybe just two or three things uh, which has been your own learning about what, you know, how it is perhaps different teaching entrepreneurship to students versus teaching any other module. 
and maybe I can come to you. So you know it's very interesting, we talk about teaching entrepreneurship but if you look at it most entrepreneurs are self-taught. Right? Absolutely. So there's a bit of a dichotomy. In yeah and we love asking all the time right. leaders of tomorrow exactly. yeah, whether entrepreneurship can be taught. So, so, so the idea here again is that when you break, like Hussein talked briefly, when you break down this course the first thing that you need to do is give them exposure. Right? So give them exposure to different technologies, to different trends, to what's happening. Also get them more to think macro because they have to solve, if they want to be successful entrepreneurs at scale, they need to think about large challenges, right? grand challenges. Right? No one thought that you know, you'd have a community of online which you spend more time on Facebook than anyone, anywhere else. Right? But these are mostly ludicrous ideas which are successful. So give them the safety net to make those ideas successful. But not only that, it's also grounding the basis, right? Most entrepreneurs you will see are extremely, extremely humble, right? So giving them a, a number of skill sets which also baseline them to opportunities like these are important. If you see what Jack Ma has said recently in the World Economic Forum, he says that, you know, 800 million of us are going to be replaced by robots, right? So what are the skill sets like thinking, like creativity, like music, like art? You know, what are these opportunities to be entrepreneurial that exist? And that is what we actually need to bring into our pro programs. He said culinary as well, by the way. So. Okay. How many such programs do we have which are so specific? You know, culinary, for instance, or uh, maybe someone teaching someone to be, um, you know, running a salon in the future. Do we have enough of those courses? Is that a business opportunity in India? It is in fact and it's a very big business opportunity but there are boutique operations that are happening like if you see a VLCC you see the Enrich salons they are doing and they are expanding mass yeah I, I want to but how to have it more mass then that that is the business opportunity what should an entrepreneur who's looking at the space then do so you know Australia has been very good at doing this they have actually been able to commoditize entrepreneurial training in malls Right, so you can walk into a mall right next to a Zara, you also have a training, uh, a hair training institute or you have a culinary institute. And what they've done is they've been able to scale that across different retail locations. So they have people coming in any which way, upskilling themselves and leaving. So it becomes like a skills mall, yeah. right? And that is a huge, huge opportunity that has to be done at scale. And what, as Rakhi said, you know, most people get daunted by the costs of, let's say, real estate or, or investment upfront. But you know, we're in the sharing economy, so I think there are there is a model out there, like co-working, right, with yeah. WeWork and Office and all these yeah. companies, what they're doing. There's a model out there where you can take existing space and create your skill center and pack it up and move. Maybe not for everyone, not for but but it is an option you could look at, and it is something that will happen because most of the listed education companies abroad are skill-based companies and they're doing exceedingly well. Okay, uh, you were talking about the Atal Innovation Center as well as the Atal Tinkering Labs. I want to talk about government policy and government regulation and whether that is necessary. And I will come to Skill India in just a bit. But to talk about what role perhaps the government can play in this industry. And do you think the government impetus will help? Because most entrepreneurs say, I wish the government would have a hands-off uh, you know, approach. That's the best way entrepreneurship will thrive. But do you have I think when it view? comes to uh, education in the primary section, it obviously is really important that the government has some kind of a framework. Okay. Because without the framework, sort it's... Of a framework? So framework in terms of, you know, what would be the curriculum? So if I'm looking at public schools, you know, how would I be looking at getting these kids to think outside the box? How will I develop skills of responsible risk taking, collaboration? So there has to be some kind of a framework. And that's why I think, you know, there are uh, non-profit organizations like TIE and they have chapters all across the world. So it's an association of entrepreneurs. They can actually help the government in terms of, you know, setting up these modules and then comes the train the trainer. But I think at primary school education level, it's really important that the government does take an interest. So the Niti Aayog is obviously one such initiative that the government has taken. But obviously that one initiative doesn't suffice, keeping in mind the mass that we are talking about. Would the two of you agree that having the government involved in setting up curriculum possibly is the best idea? Definitely. I feel it is very important because uh, it kind of gives you that uh, initiative and that mark and uh, all across people are coming forward and helping in their way definitely. So like he's, do, you know, like he said, like Sada said that, you know, we have these skilled programs. Those kind of skilled programs can be introduced because if you see the villages and all and the rural areas, there's so much skill there as well. So to recognize that and convert that into a program, so you're giving them a hands-on approach, which is important. Uh, uh, I think it would make a lot of a difference. As we're running out of time, I still need to talk about the role that technology plays, particularly in a country
country like India, you want to take education and reach it out to the masses, technology of course will help you do that. What role is technology playing? What role should it play for an entrepreneur who's looking in the space and saying, yes, can teach entrepreneurship, that's a business idea, and using technology, what are the opportunities? So you know, India is at this perfect storm, right? Because we have all the all our people identified through Aadhaar. We have fantastic, you know, bandwidth through Geo and and all these new companies coming in. And the future of learning is going to be mobile, right? So yeah. universities are moving to mobile. What we the only challenge that we have in India towards this is a mindset that learning happens only in a classroom. So if we start with blended models, where let's say 80% of or 90% of the program is online, and I would say mobile, not even desktop based, because everyone has a smartphone and everyone has access to data on a smartphone. So that is really the opportunity that one has to leverage. Fantastic, thank you all very much for being here tonight. And it's uh, uh, clearly a no-brainer that we have to see much more when it comes to teaching entrepreneurship and encouraging our youngsters to think like entrepreneurs. Thank you, thank you once again for your thank time. Thank you very much thank for you. your time. Well. Sure. That's our show tonight. If you have any feedback for us, do remember you can write in at leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. Tweet at me personally on sunanda underscore j or lot underscore et now. You can also reach us on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on et now. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.